So the land acknowledgement. We meet today in the community of Iowa City, which now occupies the homelands of Native American nations to whom we owe our commitment and dedication. The area of Iowa City was within the homelands of the Iowa, Meskwaki, and Sauk. And because history is complex and time goes far back beyond memory, we also acknowledge the ancient connections of many other indigenous peoples here. The history of broken treaties and forced removal that dispossessed indigenous peoples of their homelands was and is an act of a colonization and genocide that we cannot erase. We implore the Iowa City community to commit to understanding and addressing these injustices as we work toward equity, restoration, and reparations. We now have the vote to approve the meeting minutes from the August 19th, 2021 meeting. And is there any way to amend for the meeting minutes for the last meeting or would we just have to add that for? You mean to approve them from the September 2nd meeting? Yes. Those will be on the next agenda. Okay, okay. Um, does anyone have any issues with the meeting minutes from the August 19th meeting? Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the August 19th, 2021 meeting. Second. Stephanie, can we please get roll call? Uh, Commissioner Ali? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gatawa? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. And next we have the review of the pr proposed agreement with Kearns and West, including reference checks. So for this one, so as part of these late handouts. And um, one thing I just really wanted to go over first and foremost was the scope of the services in the consultant agreement and also the timeline. But before that, just wanted to bring up that we have had some stakeholders in the community that do wanna join the discussion that are asking if there are any other opportunities for public input on this aspect. And also just more fears of how much uh, say they are going to have in the process. And that factor as well of if this is going to be volunteer work or if this is going to be work that there's any way them or their organization where they're coming from can be compensated for. Uh, so just wanted to open the discussion in terms of that. If any of you have heard anything else such as that, if like we wanted to allow for space for any more public comment on this aspect or public comment at this time. I'd welcome public comment. I too as well. Um, is there anyone in the Zoom version or here tonight that would like to make any extra comment on that? No. Um, I will make just a comment um, to something that I heard you say. Um, people, I think we should have public input because I saw other organizations unnamed at this point, but in Iowa City and they have facilitators and the facilitators kind of set up the format of their meeting and they don't really have control over it. and. It's been some things that happened in the past couple of weeks where certain groups didn't like the format that the facilitator had set up, but the group that the facilitator was representing really didn't have a say of how the format was. So I kind of agree with the concerns of how much sway they will hold. So um, just wanted to quickly read just some of the aspects of it so we could at least have it on the record. Um, 
So for the convening and understanding that first task, some of the things that jump out again are just the developing the strategy, agenda, and materials for the task force kickoff meeting. So that kickoff meeting would be with the city of Iowa staff team, TRC chair and vice chair, one-on-one -on -one interviews with TRC members and selected city staff council members, developing an overall work plan and meeting schedule. And then they would do weekly virtual coordination with the city staff team. One question I just, again, have on that for the city is I do remember them talking about having more city staff available for us, which is one thing just haven't seen. So um, we do have, uh, Ter Teresa, sorry, I can't remember your last name. Uh, Ms. Ms. Vanatter has now been joining us these last few meetings, but I just not clear on whether it's here for this process or they do they have you with us going forward? Okay, just for comment. Yeah, so um, that's one thing that we just still need to clear up with the city as well. Because um, in terms of correspondence, that would be picking up a lot more. And just wary of the fact that we do have one dedicated staff member and don't want to continue just throwing all of that correspondence her way. Because otherwise, if it doesn't happen that way, then that then falls on us to follow up on everything. That next aspect of the designing, the fact-finding, truth-telling, reconciliation process. So interviews being conducted, phone, video conference, et cetera. Uh, reporting on findings to TRC, drafting the process design. And I wanna put that keyword on, what I keep seeing here is like drafting and assisting. So it just seems to me still that in any part of the process, there still needs to be you know, consent from us or a vote from us on how that happens. So one thing I would just like to make sure that we do, uh, if we are to agree on, on this current proposal, is that we are sure to not only ask for public comment for each of these items, but to actively seek it and to continue asking people in the public to come out, talking more about the TRC, uh, maybe writing op-eds and things of that nature. I know I do plan to write another one uh, for next week, but that public just input from us is just gonna be very important to making sure we actually have that public input early rather than later, because whatever comes into the process early is really going to define everything else that happens. Uh, for the next part, assisting with coordinating the logistics in terms of the fact-finding, truth-telling public process training uh, the Conservation Corps, prepare public facing materials to assist attendees with participation. So one thing I found with the reference that I spoke to was that um, actively sought out Dr. Larry, Larry Schuler uh, in the city of Austin in terms of uh, some issues that they'd been having down there. And they had a lot of problems with having more public input on things that the city was doing and he brought him in to task him essentially with making sure the public wanted to have a stake in the conversations. And that's one thing that I was one, happy to hear, but two, that uh, their correspondence started years ago and they do still speak today. And this was Mr. Doug Matthews. And he was also polite enough to wanna you know, stay in touch with us in terms of how things are going. So just wanted to make sure to include that. So that was on the record. And then um, determining appropriate roles for TRC members, Kearns and West team, city staff personnel at in-person events. So it seems that every part that's drafted in here, it's thought out in terms of not just drafting the materials, but making sure that we do know that there's going to be roles that we do have to play at these events. And it's not just setting it up and hoping for the best. But again, I just keep seeing that Iowa City staff will assist at events with agreed upon tasks. And just the troubling part again is there's a lot of stuff that talks about staff helping and just still have yet to hear from the city on that actual staff assistance, which again is why those two original budgets had those payments to community organizers and community helpers. So I think it's been six weeks now since we heard about needing more city staff and still know nothing on it. 
I guess I'm just saying all this to say that while I do want to proceed forward today, I am having a hard time doing that and knowing that they're going to be ready to start from day one, but we still do not know what the city is going to do from day one. We still don't know if they're actually going to be giving us more staff. And that's the main thing for me. Because until that happens, it comes down to having those community helpers, those community uh, assistants, and we need a budget item in front of them to make sure that those people are paid. Because if they're doing work that the city would otherwise pay someone for, they sh shouldn't be doing it for free again. But that's all I have for now. If anyone else has anything they'd like to add. And that, that, this is Commissioner Wango Igadua. Uh, that last point where you are expressing your hesitance on not being clear as far as the city is concerned. Um, it's a it's resonating with when I I I talked to Mr. Ray Bere as one of the references for there's a note on that I provided a, a summary of, of that discussion and one of the things he said when they got Cairns and West and also and in particular because they were working with. Dr. Dr. Scholar, uh, he was saying the that re, what uh, the chair has said resonates very much with what Mr. Beret said that when they were seeking him or seeking them, it's because they were feeling that their priorities were not together with the executive. They had different priorities. And it's also sounding as if from what the chair is talking about, which I also personally, I also feel and I've expressed publicly that are we on the same path? Because the city council does say this, but is it really for that? So, and when they got Cairns and West, they were able to move from the kind of starkness they were in getting, it's as if they were able to pull out the executives' uh, priorities and then theirs, they were all clarified. So I, I, that's one of the points I loved when I was discussing that because it captured where we were and, the, and that they were able to get that and start moving. Yeah, and they're still in the process that made them hire Cairns and West. And in particular, they got Mr. Larry, Dr. Larry Shola. Yeah, again, like I don't want anyone to feel like I'm trying to stall or anything, but it's just, again, just seeing the stuff Iowa City staff assist with this, distribute to media, social media, and this and that. and. I just personally do not feel comfortable adding all of that load onto one person, especially knowing that Stephanie is also involved in other parts of, of uh, commissions. It's like, that is just not fair at all. <clears throat> and that again, just comes back to all of us taking it on. And uh, again, everyone has jobs, things to do, families, et cetera. And that again, comes down to that piece of them continually saying against compensation, against compensation, against compensation. And this is the trouble I keep having with us not being heard on the sense of if people aren't brought in to help us do it, then we have to do it. And the nature of the work and how intensive it is seeing this laid out and from hearing from the references, it just shows that if that staff backing is not there, if, and if that community backing is also not brought in with it, it cannot be a success. There's so much follow-up that's involved. And seeing the timeline here as well of them still wanting to complete by June 30th, that, that original date to get that report in, that squeezes things in, in even further. 
I'm just to the personal position right now where I want to go to that city council meeting on Tuesday and read this and just take them to task publicly on that aspect. Cause it's honestly just, uh, I can't take the stalling anymore. It's, it's annoying. We shouldn't be told a whole six, seven weeks ago that they want to provide more city staff, more city staff should be provided that also cannot be compensated. Um, and then had some people in the public saying that you don't do enough, like not thinking that we do enough. And now seeing this, if it's not the staff, then it's us taking it all on. So again, literally does become another job. I personally right now cannot add another job. Because if that happens, especially with this being unpaid, that would force me to spend less time on things I could actually get paid for, help pay uh, bills at home, pay off student loans, et cetera, things such as that. It's, that's just not right. And when, you, when you're saying, when you're talking to the references, uh, like me, one of the other things that Mr. Uh, Bere said is that what was good about working with them, and especially because they mainly worked with Dr. Shola, is that he is very knowledgeable of how local government works. Like you're saying, they, they, they can see and how it ought to be for, I mean, for some of us, that's not our area. It's not my area of expertise. So, and how it works and sometimes even the politics of it, um, no, that's, yeah. So it was good to hear from them and for them, it was a benefit with that knowledge and how to proceed. And they became unstuck and started moving and laying the groundwork once they hired them. And even when you're talking about the community, uh, another strength from Dr. Shola is drawing out people and drawing on members and understanding even the scope of their needs and, uh, and drawing other people to come and participate and understand their concerns. Yeah. Yeah, so I kind of feel the same sentiment that Mohammed feels. Um, I'm just not sure about this. Doesn't make sense, staff. You, know, you can't be saying staff in plural because we don't have that. And so, and another thing is the public comment part that can't be limited at all. I'm I'm going to ref, I, I'm letting it know right now on the record if a facilitator comes in and wants to limit public comment. You know, we're not going to have public comment for three hours, but tries to the limit it in the ways that I saw other facilitators do. You know, for example, I went to a meeting that was an hour and a half and they gave 15 minutes of public comment. That's unacceptable. So I'm letting it be known that I'm going to oppose if public comment is not involved in this whole process. I think what I want to do, but again, need input from all of you on this is I want to talk to as many people in the community as possible to try to get them to the city council's meeting on Tuesday. Chair Mohammed, uh, um, Daphne's had her hand up for a while and I want to oh, give her Sorry, I couldn't see with, uh, with the glare. Yeah. To give her a chance to speak. Yeah, and the volume yeah, is... Yeah, my apologies. Not, yeah, the volume. Can't hear her. Yeah, can't hear her. Hi, thank you. Oh, the volume's um, up. It, oh, you might just have to talk loud, Commissioner Daniel. Oh. Okay, um, so I, I don't necessarily want to, to think that we were intentionally, the TRC was intentionally set up to fail. I think circumstances have put us in a position where um, failure is imminent without support. Um, and that, that includes staff and that includes a facilitator and at some point, if we're not getting the support that we need from the city and from the community, maybe we need to 
go back to city council and just say, we don't think Iowa City is ready for a TRC. Uh, we don't think the community is in a place where we, yeah. Um, I, I don't want to think that there were bad intentions behind this. I really, from the bottom of my heart, think that people had good intentions when they established the TRC through that resolution. But, you know, you know what they say about good intentions and what certain roads are paved with. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's kind of where we're heading. Um, and with that, I yield. I'd like to thank everyone for their comments thus far. I think it's um, all really important things to think about. I am very encouraged that there is a, sort of a unanimous sense that I'm getting from all of us that central to our work is hearing from members of the public and including them in our on, in our processes, right? And, and I, even in this discussion, right, there's so much um, uncertainty about how to move forward because we are so sensitive to wanting people to tell us how to do our jobs well. And I think that we're setting ourselves up with that posture um, to, to do well. We, we've also seen um, over the course of the last eight months with this TRC is that the whole thing is a dynamic process and there's room for um, change and revision. Um, and we are constantly being pulled by sort of a sense of urgency while also sort of realizing that we're also limited by the breaks of being a government body. Um, and so I don't think that we're necessarily at risk of um, this thing getting out of hand. Um, if we say, let's go ahead and move forward. Um, because one, I think, uh, decisions do come through the TRC ultimately and not through the facilitator. Um, I, I hear the concern about um, uh, providing too much work on top of um, everything that we're already doing with the TRC, but I think this agreement and the things that we heard from their presentation um, two weeks ago represents an, op an opportunity to offload um, a lot of the work that you chair and our vice chair have been doing thus far so that you, we can have a little bit more time and energy to sort of act, um, be activists in the ways that we want to and still come together and make some decisions while moving forward with the truth telling process. Um, I, there's been a lot of um, bad communication from city council to us. And I think we have every right to be, to be reactive um, to that um, and be discouraged in a lot of ways. But um, I think in between a lot of sort of the, the tension um, that there's been, I think city council just is like wanting some deliverables from us based on the the, the mandates that they've, the, the charges that they've given the TRC. And if we're saying that, you know, this agreement and, um, everything that we need to support this agreement, including extra staff, um, is what we need in order to go about our fact finding as our next step, um, then, uh, then that might actually be um, encouraging to them. Um, and that, that might allow them to sort of see us as beginning to do our work and they might be more ready to accept some of the recommendations that we have moving forward. Um, so I um, want us to keep thinking about these things um, as as we continue to do our work and carry out the process processes that we have. But I don't think that um, we should delay anything. And with that, I yield. Just want to check in case anyone else. Mm, this is Vice Chair Ali. Um, I just want to say that um, Commissioner Rivera very eloquently worded. I think the what I was thinking. Um, I truly have faith, and um, I really think that this can work. And um, I just wanted to kind of second and agree on that.
also think it can work. Just my fear is just still in just that aspect of being told we'll get this, being told we need this from them, and then having just so little movement. I, it's like, yeah, I understand it's it's government, but like they just worked on a budget and they know who they have available for staff and they have so many people on staff to tell them and correspond with. It's like, it's, it's something that just needs to be taken care of very, very soon. I, I don't, I don't think it should be this hard for them to find even one person to, to be added permanently to assist, if not two, but it, it was even like, it was even clear in that uh, proposal that they originally gave that staff added staff would be needed for one, but especially that community input and already hearing from some people in the community of, yeah, we want to be a part of that original process of creating everything. But when it comes down to how it all shakes out, are we just going to be a part of the process the whole way through helping with all these other aspects and still again, doing it for free? Chair, uh, this is what I'm going to do again. Um, I'm wondering whether what I'm hearing from you, it's giving me a case of what came for, what is should come first, the chicken or the egg. So do we work with the city and demand staff before we move forward with the, with the decision on Cairns and West? Or do we move forward with that? And then working with them, get additional staff. Uh, I don't know whether that's the sense I'm getting. And if that is so, I will, uh, and oh, when I was sharing what I got from talking to the reference is if we moved forward because even them, they were stuck, it helped to navigate that stuckness. That's the word that I'm using for us and for both cases, uh, which also means that it's also agreeing with the Commissioner Rivera and also Commissioner Ali that it will help us versus, because I'm feeling the other option of waiting for us to work out. And because we've really laid that and really requested the council publicly. I remember personally, publicly during our work session with the budget saying, can we know the other commissions and boards, city boards, what support do they have? And what do we have? And uh, Commissioner Daniels has come back and said, it's not intentional that this ad hoc commission, uh, it, it's kind of like they were not ready for it, but it wasn't intentional. So again, going back, do we wait and work that out or do we move forward and work it out and get help in getting to that point? With that, I yield and hoping I didn't confuse the issue more than, yeah, hmm. I yield. Commissioner Johnson, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Johnson, I'm just, I, I just, I want to know really, where do they expect us to be at this point in time right now? What exactly is where where are our expecta expectations to supposed to be at this moment of how long we've been working like without staff without experience without all i mean i it just i'm a little confused at it all now at this point like uh we only get to meet once a month and in that process, we're expected to jump leaps and bounds with no experience whatsoever, no staff. I, I'm just confused by it. I, I just don't understand. It does to me feel like it's set up to fail. It, it, it just simply does. It, it sounds like it sounds great to say, and now that everything is kind of might have died down in certain aspects, it's like, okay, well, we're just gonna brush this under the carpet and move right on along. I, I, I don't get it. I think I, I personally think that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission should be permanent. I feel like we should have staff. I feel like we should rotate as we step off. Somebody else steps up. There's always truth. There's always reconciliation. There's, mm. it, 
it just is what it is. I'm, I'm just confused at where we need to be right now. Do, you, uh, do we have a clear cut answer? That's one of the reasons why I was asking before, where are we expected to be? All right. That's just my own personal. Um, so I got a few more things. Um, it's been mentioned in this conversation that the um, city of Iowa City may not be ready for a TRC. Well, the way that I would think of it is the government of Iowa City is not ready for a TRC. I've got comments from people, and there's so many people in the public that are eager to speak out. And I also feel like that I want to move forward with this, too. Like, I don't want to stall, but if we move forward, are we going to get those staff? You know, like, we're moving forward, but they're not moving forward because they're worried about different things. You know, are we going to get the staff when we move forward, or are we going to be left, like was already described, and turn into a whole nother job that I can't afford to do, you know, a lot, not, not, not f for free. I definitely couldn't afford to do that. Cause you know, it's just like people talk about, they have expenses and things like that. Um, I have children, a mortgage, kids about to go to college. So I, you know, I can't afford to do a whole nother job when we need those staff. And as far as making the TRC permanent, I mean, if they're not gonna give us, you know, any um, stipend, then we could be permanent like the other commissions. And who, and, but, cause other commissions don't have a mandate. They don't have a time frame. So if you're gonna make us have a time frame and then not give us a stipend, how about change that around and make us permanent? And I like the idea, you know, some people may like rotate in and out or have other obligations, and but it's permanent with that idea. And commission, Commissioner Ali's got her hand up for a while. I can't hit him. Can you guys hear me? Probably want to talk just a little louder. Um, so this is kind of a clarification question for Steph. Um, if we approve this, do we, does that mean that we're agreeing with everything that's on this contract or do we have clarification with Kearns and West after and um, be, are we able to amend it? Um, you can amend it. Today we have to Vice Chair, did you hear that response from Teresa? Not at all. Okay. She said we can amend it, but um, they'd have to agree. Okay. So we would be able to have that conversation with them after even, even if we decide to send it, to send the recommendation to council, we would be able to have that conversation with them after. They, uh, but they have to agree as well to the, the amendments. The, the contract, I mean, if, if the contract is signed then you know you would follow the dictates of the contract what Teresa said was is that is there potential to amend the contract at some point during its duration that answer is yes assuming that kearns and west is agreeable to that and then i would presume it would have to go in front of the city council again so then my question is <clears throat> would we need to have the like would it have been probably ideal to have this conversation with Kearns and West regarding the issues that we might have with the things that they said or am I misunderstanding kind of where some people's issues are with these um uh I mean the things that I've heard in this discussion it it seems that they are the concerns are with the city in terms of support and staffing. I mean, so I think it's also important to, you know, es especially if you have paid attention to city council meetings in the last, you know, year, maybe two years, they have this weird affinity for consultants. So I, I think that it actually might be helpful to have someone like Kearns and West who can, you know, speak bureaucratically like on our behalf 
Um, I, I really think that it would be more of a benefit rather than anything um, detrimental to this commission, but I am also, um, I, I also understand what people's issues are with these, with the contract, so. And with that, I yield. Uh, to me, it's just more of like, just the timeline in itself, like just that task three of the fact finding, truth telling public process, like them wanting to complete it it by the end of February and like sitting here of at this point, they'd probably start beginning of October or so. And then that, that issue of the staff community input and everything. It's like, if it takes them too long to get staff, like to assist, then again, it's everything else packed in on all of us until like we get through that period of either more staff coming in, getting a budget item passed alongside Kearns and West. And the question becomes, how long does that take with the city? You know, like, are they going to properly prioritize it? Does it take them two, three, four meetings for them to finally be like, all right, we'll listen to your consultants. We'll do this. Because the longer they take, the harder it is to abide by these timeline guidelines they're wanting. I mean, you're talking we'll do the best that we can, members. right? I don't think that we need to, keep acting from a place of reactivity and discouragement. I think that we need to keep leading with our best foot forward. And right now this is our best foot forward. I, th I think when we get down to the logistics, um, having a facilitator can benefit us in two ways. One is that after we begin our like really nitty gritty work with them, we can get a very clear understanding of what roles a, an extra staff could be, because then we'll have more of an understanding of exactly where those boundaries of their responsibilities, our responsibilities, and these other responsibilities might fall. And that argument will come, I think, will be presented to the city council much um, uh, much more realized and they would be, I think, more prone to accepting that recommendation that we hire additional staff for extra labor. Um, the other thing is that I, I agree with um, the point that vice chair made, which is that at this point we have bad relationships with city council and that's why a facilitator like Kearns and West can mediate some of the discussions so that they can really package some of the concerns and, um, and, uh, emotions that we have in a way that the city council can best hear it and still respond in a productive manner. Because I think that we've done a really good job with city council at expressing ourselves honestly, and that's been absolutely needed. Chair, you've done a fantastic job at that. However, city council isn't good at hearing the way that we want to hear, with the way that we want to say things. And I think for that reason, a facilitator is necessary. Um, and so moving forward with this, I think is the, first step that needs to go forward. It's, I, I said a lot of stuff right now that I'm not happy with, <laughs> right? Um, I don't love the situation that we're in, but I wanna move forward. I wanna do the work of the TRC. Yeah. Question, has the city council ever, maybe I've missed it, or I'm not thinking of it at the time, have they ever recommended how much money they wanted us to spend? No, I've been asking them since like March, February or March. So we ask, all right, we ask, we don't get a response. And then when we come up with something, then it's still not good enough. How does this work? It's, I've never had more clarification than there's been a million dollars set aside to last summer. And that part of that is allocated to what we need. So tell them what we need. And as soon as we ask for it, then all of a sudden, so not really. How does that work? I don't know. Um, just, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's where we are thinking that those concerns, uh, because we've been expressing them again and again, and my word for this, I'm using stuck, and it resonates with where Mr. Bray and their, their management was when they got Cairns and West. And... Uh, I would rather we move forward and they will help us get unstuck like they were helped and they, and they have no reservation continuing to work with Cairns and West. And I am thinking 
moving forward is better than being where we have been for for some time now because we really i also personally wouldn't want i love this work and it's part of the work that i also do even professionally so uh, some of us really do not have a choice especially in equity work because it's even it becomes even personal so even if i'm not part of trc wherever i am because i'm on the wrong end of it me and those that are around me and and our allies not just here but in the world and even as i sit here there is a lot of people even outside of the us who follow this commission so that being said i again i would i would go for us moving forward than being where we are because the word i keep using is just being stuck and kind of just floundering yeah and i also read more on cans and west and what they've done i'm really right now my i raise even my voice because i'm excited at seeing what they've done yeah so i would choose to go forward than being where we are or going back and even if it's not for this commission like i said this work continues and i don't even want to be under any pressure that there are deadlines that there it's uh it's we we do our bit and the best that we can yeah and we get we get the help that we can and if our time is up uh, we will have added and actually even this work it's historical i've been in the city since 2002 and even when you look around in other towns there are also other people who are watching even as i was listening to mr berry even before he had been reading on us and following on us on iowa city so we are moving in the it depends on how you measure success even having those difficult conversations uh, commissioner rivera has even said we have said very difficult things and even saying that even to the local government and like i said some of us that's not our expertise either in experience or in education but we say it anyway and even learning even to be in such meetings and being trusted by the communities and the people that are around us so with those very many words i feel moving forward and not just feeling it's even with talking to those who have worked with cans and west and the reading that i've been doing on them and the work that they do when they're not doing equity work uh it made me feel wanting to move forward than what we have right now um so i would agree as well that we need that we need to move forward but if we move forward i think that one of the first things we should have them address is the problems and the gap and the things that we have with the city because if we have all of these times that need that things need to be done by and these deadlines well the issues whether it's stipends not having enough staff and things like that those things need to be addressed first um so we can move forward because we got we, we are running out of time so we need we can't stay in these we need them to help us address that first um as long as i've been on the um the um trc this is one of the most difficult votes that i'm going to make that i have to make because in my mind you know it's kind of it's kind of like a common sense thing um these guys are going to get close to $200,000. We don't have staff and we do extra work because we don't have staff and we get zero. So the vote that you're taking is to give someone $200,000, get no staff that we know of yet and we don't get anything with that on the yield. So think about that before you, you know. It's it's a difficult vote. Yeah, um I'm comfortable with it as it's written, but Yeah, one thing I would like to have is a contingency of sometime in these next 30 days think of a way to make like a well thought out recommendation to the city that this does not remain a one time commission. Cuz there is no way that I'm walking away from this letting people that have such a low turnout 
in their own elections for getting their positions and then get to keep that position for five years, decide whether or not that these recommendations that are given at the end of this become part of what they do without another TRC having the ability to step in and say something. So, Commissioner if, Daniel if, has uh, had her hand raised. So, I I understand being optimistic. I I also think there's room here for being realistic, and what they what we have been um, we need to do something a number of steps we need to take before we can start really diving into the truth telling truth collecting part of our work and that really is the most important part of what the truth and reconciliation commission is going to do and i for one i feel like the community deserves more than two or three months <clears throat> two of those months being the month of Thanksgiving and the month of Christmas and doing that and thinking that we are going to get like truths from people who really have been waiting. They've been waiting to tell their truths and we are rushing through this. And I think the worst thing you can do to someone who's brave enough to stand up and talk about their truths is to rush them through it. You might as well not even be listening. And so I think it's we need to be realistic. If we have deadlines, those deadlines may have to be pushed back to actually do justice to what this commission is and to do justice to, to this community. Um, and with that, I yield. Make sure we have goals set and we want to make sure we have them accomplished but at the same time this is a very very touchy situation that needs to be taken care of and for that a, a deadline of a, a short window it just simply doesn't make sense. would this item is this already on the table for the city's next meeting uh, do you happen to have the the wording structure of of the agenda item? Like, have they not released it yet? It will. It it is on the council agenda, but depending on tonight's meeting, you know, it will either be up for them to consider it, or it could be, you know, pulled entirely. This is Commissioner Dillard. I've been really quiet because I've just been listening to everyone. Um, I really appreciate everyone's thoughts on, on this matter and I feel really torn um, just hearing both sides. I feel very strongly as I always do that we do owe our community um, to move forward and have a sense of optimism while we do have this sense of pessimism um, because of what we've been through. Um, I do feel also I've been thinking the same thing about what uh, Commissioner Daniel's been that this is not enough time to do what we need to get done. We're gonna be doing the most important part during the, the winter months, who's gonna be able to do that. Um, but I also feel that like, as everyone else has said that we do need to put our best foot forward and if they asked us to do this, we need to show up and do it and say, we're doing what we need to do because people are depending on us. We were chosen to be the voices of this. And obviously we want as much public opinion as possible. Um, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, but I think um, I, I go back and forth. It's a disservice on both sides if we aren't at least putting our, uh, doing what we, we need to do um, out there. So yes, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, so I think I'm ready to move forward too because I kind of agree with you. Um, it was just mentioned that there's a lot of people waiting to tell their truths. So I think that um, just the stalling and waiting around is not about us doing it. It's getting us more staff and other things that we talked about could have been handled a long time ago. Shouldn't have to wait six weeks and things like that because it makes me personally 
feel, you know, just kind of messed up because it's people that I know that want to tell truths. And I told them months ago, like, hey, maybe, you know, we always have to go through and pick the people that we want to hear from about their truths. But I told them months ago, like, hey, I might get you a chance to come and tell your truth. But because of all this stuff and stalling, these people are just waiting around. And then just, just like what was mentioned, too, I don't want these, these people to be rushed through telling the truth because that's not the way to go. And that seems to be a trend around Iowa City and the government. They rush people to make their comments. So I don't want that to be, I want people to be able to be heard because that's the most important thing um, that we have in this community to hear from the people. Do we want to continue discussion or do we want to move on to the vote? I just have one question. On Tuesday, we're, are we presenting or are we just, are they um, just discussing and are we allowed to talk? You would be allowed to talk. Okay. They'll ask for public. Okay. So quick question. We're all going to be there Tuesday or most of us or some of us or how's that working? Oh, there's no way I'm missing that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not everyone has to be, but yeah, I know there's no way I'm missing that. I'd like to respond quickly to something that Commissioner Daniel had mentioned um, in terms of like the time crunch that we're under. It's certainly not ideal. And I, I agree that we really need to have the space to do our job well. Um, we also have to kind of currently operate under the assumption that none of us are doing this work past June 30th, because right now no one's appointed us past that point. And so if that time crunch, if these deadlines that are being imposed on us are, fin are final, then we should do as much as we can um, with the time that we have. I agree that um, I'd like to request more time for us to do this work. Um, but we also have to carry forward the possibility that 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 won't be granted. But I thank you for your comments. Um, I just got one last thing as well. Um, if we if we ask for more time, I think we're justified in that um, because of all the disruptions that we had that wasted time in the beginning. We are definitely justified in asking for more time because we could have had been had a facilitator, but we could have been had a budget. But um, we had to change the whole look of our commission. So that also slowed us down, which was, I think, was for the best that we changed our look. Um, so I think we're justified in asking for more time. We wanted to move on to the vote on agenda item number six. Just before that, I uh, Commissioner Harris and also uh, some of the, I don't feel we were wasting time and all of us in our lives and even as we work, we do go on assessing situations so that we can make decisions and then work and collect information. Uh, so, and it's the it's laying that groundwork. It usually takes a lot of time. But once you have laid it, the collection is usually easier once the groundwork is done and the, the making decision based on it and looked at it at what you collected. So uh, a lot of the things we have been doing, even the tassels with the city council, they were necessary. And from both ends, it's courageous work. And uh, a lot of us here have been in equity work. It's never easy. A lot of times there are tears. And we have even shed tears in these meetings because it is tough work and it takes a toll emotionally. So it isn't really wasting time. So it is just that groundwork. And as we say, moving forward, we do our best and we give it what we can. And if we don't get any more time to continue, then we leave it for the next person to continue there. And with that, I yield. Chair, before we make a vote, can I request that we open up to public comment one more time to see if they have anything yeah, to weigh yeah, in Yeah, I definitely on. wanted to do that. Um, do we have anyone from the public that would like to make a comment on this or I mean, any input is welcome? I 
Yeah, yes. um, oh, you just have to use the mic. I guess I definitely agree with your concern about having enough time for community members to come forward and be heard. And it is really the coldest time if we have some of those super duper cold times, you know, the polar vortex, people aren't going anywhere. And then you've got people for whom getting out and childcare is an issue. I just think that's on so many levels, that is your work. That's what you've been saying. So I'm just saying it back to you, not like I know something you don't know. So I just support you with that concern and seeing what can be done to allow for more time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for Thank your you. work and your deliberation and your commitment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Um, we do have a member of the public with the hand raised, I believe. Was hoping this, thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? I just wanna make sure before I... Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so my comments, so I'm Nicholas Tyson, by the way, a uh, long time resident of the area, so to speak. I currently live in Coralville, but I lived in Iowa City for a very long time. Um, Okay, so I should preface this by saying my comments are in the context of someone who has been paying attention to city government and local politics for a very, 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 very long time. And so the point that I want to make is that a city council is trying to wait you out. And what I mean by that is that that's not necessarily like a good thing or a bad thing. It's that from my perspective, as someone who is, you know, has whose political ideology is extremely left wing, the reason why it seemed like the city created the TRC in the first place was to essentially do something that responded to the fervor of the protest movement, you know, last year. And um, IFR, for instance, the Iowa Freedom Riders were intimately involved in the process of creating the TRC, became very frustrated with it. And even, you know, after some time, did their own thing. And, you know, now that's on hiatus. But at the end of the day, for city council, like the purpose of the TRC has already been served. So what I would suggest to all of you is to go like actually just be bolder, like do what you want to do. In other words, I, on the one hand, I think it's useful to try and navigate the politics of how city council works. And also the fact that like, they are pretty easy to bully into doing what you want them to do if you're more vocal and more forthright about things. But if this TRC is going to get any traction within the broader community, then you all need to be like, I don't know, I, I, I guess I just want you all to be not angrier, but more like uh, in people's faces about this. And that's not just council, but that's also like go to don't just go to council. Also go to all of the various local interest groups, go to the Affordable Housing Coalition, go to the Housing Trust, go to like even go to, you know, BVP, go, go to all of the various groups that exist, go to SDNA and say like, Hey, we need you on board. And if you're not going to be on board, at least like tell people what we're doing, why it's important. And I realize that that puts a lot more work on your shoulders, but if you don't, then this will all fail simply because city council will wear you down. In other words, what will happen is like you'll keep submitting budgets to them and they'll be like, well, why are you going to do this? You've already seen this. You've already you've already submitted a budget to them in which they tried to pick it apart for completely arbitrary reasons. So if you don't go bold and if you don't do it now, then I don't know. I, I am afraid that this will die a slow death. And I think that would be horrible. And the reason why I think it's horrible is, sorry, I know that I'm taking a lot of time, but I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but back in, I think it was 2012, there was this play that was put on called Mayberry. In fact, I know for a fact that one of the commission members even performed in Mayberry. 
What was Mayberry? Mayberry Mayberry was this play that gathered a bunch of testimony from people all throughout the community, and it was an attempt to try and have an actual racial reckoning, especially around the whole issue of, I mean, I know you're all familiar, probably familiar with the phrase like Chicago people. And the thing is, it was really gut-wrenching. It was an amazing performance. It was put on by um, the working group theater. And there was so much positive feedback in the community. Everyone loved it. A lot of great conversations happened and then nothing happened. And so the thing is that the conversations aren't really enough. Like the truth telling, it, it has happened in the past and it's happened in a way that has been really powerful and moving and then it goes nowhere. And so the thing is, and I'm sort of riffing here, so apologies if this doesn't make sense, but there has to be a political confrontation at some point. And if that means the TRC going against the city and saying like, hey, like this is bullshit, <laughs> like you are all engaging in straight, for, straight up bullshit right now. And go to council with that, go to the city, like name names. If you don't want to do that, I can understand why. But that's just my perspective in terms of like seeing how things have been going. Like I, I get so mad because so little changes and it gets worse and worse and worse every single year. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little emotional about this. And like and this is coming in from, from just like some random white guy, just some stupid white guy. Like I see this and it makes me furious. And I really, really want you to go bold, like go hard or go home, I guess is, is the way I would put it. Because I mean, approve the contract, don't approve the contract. I don't really think it matters either way because I think the real struggle, the real battle is in sort of like taking all of these things that have sort of been like behind the scenes with council, behind the scenes with city staff and being more open about them. And I'm gonna stop rambling. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we ready to vote then? Agenda item number six. Agenda item number six, vote on whether to recommend to the city council to enter into an agreement with Kearns and West. Um, Stephanie, do we need to put a motion forward on this then? Because it's the the name of? I'm not sure I understand your question. Um, I just wasn't sure just because this was the name of the agenda item, if we need to put a motion forward or if if we just start with it. Well, you can, I mean, usually you would do a motion, get a second, open it up for discussion and then take a vote on the motion. Okay. In that case, um, making a motion to recommend to the city council to enter into an agreement with Kearns and West. A second. Can I amend just a bit? to say enter into agreement based on the consultant agreement in our late packet handouts um what was that can can we amend the motion to um say enter into an agreement based on the consultant agreement that we're reviewing tonight i uh, just want to clarify on the process for that under um so because there was already a second do we just have to rescind or do we have to vote first on the one I, that was seconded I, I think you can amend the motion but i'm the, the agreement that you're looking at currently would be the agreement that would be in the council packet if you don't make any changes tonight. Okay. So, I mean, there wouldn't, it's, it would, it's the same okay. agreement. I um, revoke my suggested re amendment. Oh, no, no, good clarification. And, and if you notice, Kearns and West has actually signed it, so. Their, their signatures on it. So if there were any amendments, then you know, you'd have to go back to the process of getting their input on any amendments and then getting their signature again. Um, is there any other discussion anyone want to have before the vote? In that case, Stephanie, can you please get a roll call? We have Commissioner Ali. Yes. Commissioner Daniel. Yeah. Commissioner <clears throat> Diller? Yes. Commissioner Gathawa? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, motion passes 8 0.
exciting. So in terms of the next steps uh, for agenda item number seven, just because it doesn't, um, it's not really specific, what exactly can we say during this agenda item? Uh, the next steps are in relation to um, what happens kind of after the, is assuming if the council signs it, the agreement or agrees to enter into the agreement is a better way to phrase that. What would kind of be the next step so that everyone's clear? And that's another reason why Teresa is here so that she can explain that. Um, so once they, let's just say they approve it, we'll just go ahead and issue a purchase order once, once I get the proper documents and then you guys are free to take it and run. And that's going to take like a couple days after, probably a couple days for me to get everything together. And, um, so you could start as soon as next Friday. Are we allowed to speak to them at all until that point? No. Okay. Okay. So the final go, last. It has to go through me. Okay. Well, the only thing I would say about next steps is something I mentioned earlier. We need to get the differences that we have resolved so we can just go full speed ahead just in case we don't get no extension of our date. We need to get the things resolved. Like, where's our staff at? Because the contract mentioned staff. So that needs to be resolved immediately. And that'll be my thing in the next steps instead of, and then of course, when it's time to go, then we can start getting these truths to be told as well. But with the differences, it's gonna cause, you know, the same arguments back and forth. Like where's our staff? Where's, we need to move past that. It's time to tell the truths. So we need to get that out the way. Just in terms of calendar, um... So in October, we're switching to meeting still twice a month until we change that on the second and fourth Thursdays of each month. Um, but if we keep going, then our next meeting will be Thursday, September 30th. Um, I think if the agreement um, is approved, then it'll just be important for us to really have a big meeting with Kearns and West again, and to sort of lay out exactly what, how they would like to work out, work with us. But I think that um, if once the sort of every, all the dots are, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, if you would put them into communication with us even before that meeting um, so that they can reach out. And if, you know, any of us have availability to talk to them before that next meeting, I, I certainly would be happy to try to find a time with them so that they, um, so that we can be a little bit more prepared. I can, when I issue the purchase order, I can give them all your, your names and contact numbers. That's fine. Um, can you tell them if we prefer text or phone call and like if it's okay for them to text us? Can we just say email addresses as default and then you can communicate with them? Um, do whatever you like. So if you just want to email Stephanie, what you want me to tell them. Yeah. Once the procurement is over with, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> as far as contacting them. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else have any other questions on the next steps? In that case, moving to agenda item number eight, which is announcements from commissioners and staff. Um, I only have one announcement and I can't, I'm making this to put it on the record. So I figured we would likely end up passing this today. So in terms of the contingency plan, just putting this on the record now in case they listen to it, but I'm also going to request this at the meeting Tuesday. 
I would like every single member of city council to write an op-ed to the press citizen and other local uh, news organizations in the area stating why exactly they voted 7-0 to establish a TRC. That's all I have. Mm. So um, I got an update. Um, as everyone knows, I've been working really closely with the, um, with the Escooter Workers Fund. And um, my update is kind of a great update. You know, it's not the best that we can get, but um, it kind of relates to some of the things that we've been talking about this evening, about how they limit public comment in different meetings and things like that. Um, in the past month or so, I've been with the Escooter Workers and they have took over two supervisor meetings that were supposed to be public forums, like listening forums, because they were upset because of the lack of public comment time. Um, I could say that two of those meetings were facilitated by a different facilitator than, than we're gonna get, but they were the ones that were insisting on this format to not to just limit public comment. So we decided um, that we were gonna make 200 people show up at every meeting, 200 undocumented people show up to every meeting. And at the last meeting that they had, which was on Monday, the supervisors, they couldn't make it past 20 minutes in the meeting because there were so many people in this meeting room and they, instead of staying there and listening to the concerns of the people, they fled and left the building and stopped the meeting 20 minutes in. And the scooter workers took over the meeting. And also, sadly to say, when they left the meeting, they took the microphone so the scooter workers could not use the microphone. They took it with them, but they had a backup plan because they had a megaphone and they were able to still talk and use the time that was allotted for that space, even though the supervisors fled the scene. Um, so that's just an update on that. Um, they, we always, you know, we always talk about the budget and stuff like that and the concerns that we have with it. Um, the Iowa City City Council, which was also a meeting that we had to go and kind of assert ourselves to get public comment in as well. They, the city manager has a, um, uh, he wants, he, he put out that he wants to spend one million to one and a half million on the school to workers. Well, our budget is a million dollars. We've been fighting with them for eight months about that. So that's kind of slotted. And um, I, I, um, one of the things that was on the agenda, you know, from the previous meetings that we had was the mobile homes in the area. Um, I've been to Forest View. I've been to a lot of them. And there are, you know, in disrepair. We've been, I probably, with the Workers Coalition, the School Workers Coalition, I've probably talked to a thousand people in the past two weeks and with, with like stories of with people that are in tears because they lost their job. They didn't, they didn't get a stimulus check. They struggled through the pandemic. They were already struggling before the pandemic. And sometimes, after I would go spend the day canvassing going door to door, it would leave me mentally broke down just to hear the stories for those people, you know, and those people need the help. And, I, and, and I've done some research about that and it doesn't make sense of the, some of the responses that the city and the county is giving. Oh, we need to help small businesses and we need to do this and we need to do that. Well, during the pandemic, small businesses were one of the most profitable things in this area because they had PPP, like the pay tech protection programs. They had programs that where if they paid the person 10 bucks an hour, the government would reimburse them 70% of that 10 bucks. So they were really only paying the person three bucks an hour. But we're gonna take the ARP funds and load it and give these guys ARP funds. So I just wanted to update everybody and I will have more updates in the future because we've been working hard and we've been doing a lot of things. We've been doing a lot of impactful things. And just lastly, um, I would like to say that, you know, showing force and a political force um, and, and just, you know, I don't want to say just getting into their face, but just forcing their hand, it's sad to say it works. So 
it definitely works. So with that, I yield. For me is thanking the all of us for getting up to this point. It hasn't been easy, we know that, but we know we have been giving it our all and being genuine, authentic, and expressing ourselves, even if it's difficult to, so thank you to all of us for what we've been doing, including even the staff, the city staff who have been working with us and clarifying things and letting us know some of the stuff that we didn't know. And all of us bringing in our knowledge, professional, our experiences into our work up to this point. And the other very critical part of this process that I wouldn't want to forget, we appreciate what we get from the public. Some of you, a lot of you have been with us from day one. You follow what we do, you support us. But when we need to be told, even some words, I am even something like you're BSing, <laughs> we get told. I won't say it in full because I, <laughs> I don't think I can, not right here. So we appreciate that as we move and when we get reminded, can you be yourselves? And can you, can you let your light shine? And can you let Wangui, can you let your lioness come out? And she does, we thank you, all of you. And especially the public, people have very, we don't give, how many minutes are they supposed to have and contribute? <laughs> you just mentioned that they have very few minutes. How many minutes? Three. Two? Three. E three. Two or three. But yeah, but I, I appreciate that range. Yeah. I appreciate the public participation because they figured the ways some of them have been using is to channel their contribution through us. Last I'm thinking of a group and I thank you very much. The private African urban and regional consultancy, they put their information together in helping us look at the farm, cans, cans and waste, and they use their expertise. They volunteered that. So they got more than the three minutes in getting their participation in. And then even today, they got their notes through me. And this is the African Communities Network Group. They have been week after week, they meet to follow what the TRC is doing and where they should be. And also asking questions like volunteering and how that is going to go and how much time do they have in participating. So even them, I thank them. I thank everybody who is walking this journey with us and continues even as we go into winter, they are still with us and helping us if it's working out whether do we have more time or will we not. So yeah, mine in those very many words is thank you to everybody who is walking the walk with us, our talk with us. I yield. Vice Chair. Commissioner Daniel had her hand up, so I'm gonna let her go first. No, she's yeah, oh. she has to mute. Thank you, Commissioner Amal, uh, Commissioner Ali. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to one clarify, um, Commissioner Treore, there was one member of city council who did not um, vote in favor of establishing the TRC in the resolution. And the only reason I am bringing this up is because I'm sure uh, people may bring this up to you in a snarky way. So I wanted to do it in a very, just, um, just FYI. Um, and then I also want like uh, Commissioner Harris, what you said, really spoke to my spirit. Um, the, the CDC had a moratorium on evictions that was recently struck down by the Supreme Court. And in, in what I do, uh, we've seen a lot of people who have been losing their homes and the stories are heartbreaking. And 
yesterday at the end of the day, I broke down in tears and I really just, I did not think I could do anything today because I was just, the stories were so sad. Um, and there's only so much you can do. And in the past 20 or in the past 24 hours or so, people have listened and people have said kind words who didn't even know what I was going through, but just kind words. And it's, it's amazing that thank you, saying thank you to someone and really meaning it and telling them that they're appreciated can make such a difference. And um, I, I just want everyone who's watching to kind of just say a kind word to someone because people are really going through it. And um, that's another reason why I really want to give people the opportunity to tell their truths because people are gonna come out on the other side of the, this pandemic or even on the other side of this winter with really, real, real strong stories that I think everyone should hear. And, um, and I, I just wanna say thank you for all of you and, and really, um, you're really appreciated. And I know it doesn't always feel that way, but you are. And with that, I yield. Does anyone want to respond to that? Or am Technically I? Technically can't. Oh yeah. oh yeah, that's true. Um, sorry. Uh, so I just wanted to let you guys in on a few things that are going on in my personal life right now, um, just before um, it becomes more public. Um, I was sexually assaulted in August 25th of 2019 and recently within the last two months, um, my assailant was arrested and um, I am going to be writing an op-ed about my experience um, within the Iowa City Police Department and Prosecutors Department um, on my notifications and things about how I was notified um, of my rapist getting arrested. Um, and I wanted it to share that with you guys because I didn't feel like that it was fair for any of you to read that and find that out about me. Um, just on an, in a newspaper article, um, I wanted to tell you guys all. I'm super open about it, and um, I realize that I'm lucky that I have had um, the person who assaulted me caught. Um, but yeah, jury trial is set for December 14th. And I'm hoping that um, things will get panned out before then. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to let you guys all in on what's going on with me um, right now and kind of why I'm, I, I'm not always available. And I just, I wanted you guys to understand that uh, I, I value you guys more than, um, you know, to let you hear about that through a newspaper article that I'm writing. So, um, yeah, with that, I yield to the floor. Thanks, guys. My announcement is um, mostly going to be a, a reminder to myself, but I'll say it aloud in case it's helpful for anybody else. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's important for us to acknowledge the heaviness of this work that we're doing in sort of the confines of this TRC, but also in all the lives that we're living outside of these hours that we spend together. It's hard. It's like, it's, you know, like there are times that I really dread coming to see you guys because I know that we're going to be talking about tough shit. Um, but um, I, I think that in order to sort of keep going so that we all stay sane and, and keep coming with a lot of enthusiasm is to make it sure that like, I, I need to make sure that um, I'm looking, I'm making the, a daily practice to find the joy in this work, uh, um, to offset sort of the tragedy of the reality of all of it. And I would encourage maybe everyone to do the same because there's a lot of joy to be found, right? The, 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 every Thursday I get to hang out with powerhouses in our community and I get to hear all the different perspectives of strength. Um, we get to hear from 
Mr. Tyson and Ms. Tucker and um, the people who are still willing to do this work um, and to, to, to try to advise us um, despite it being a really tumultuous journey. Um, so there's a lot to celebrate, um, but if you blink it, you'll miss it. Uh, if you blink, you'll miss it. Um, so make sure that you're kind of landing on finding the joy and the things to celebrate. Um, Cause that's, that's um, I think that's an important model to provide for the community. With that, I yield. Um, I guess just on a final note, um, how can I word this? Um, for these six council members that voted yes and the one that voted no, would still like to see op-eds from all of them. <laughs> and um, I just hope that they take a lot of time to consider this. If you do not write the op-ed, that shows a lot. If you do, take a lot of time to consider every word that you write. This is how you're going to show people that are your constituents how much you actually think about the decisions that you make. With that, I yield the floor. Do we have any staff announcements? No, thank you. All right. Um, with that, we are now adjourned.